Hi, welcome back to New England Fire Cooking. I'm Aaron Higgins, and I've gotten, I don't, I can't tell you how many messages I've gotten over the last week to make the meatloaf bombs that I took a picture of on Super Bowl Sunday last week. My buddy Roger made these absolutely killer bacon wrapped meatloaf bombs, and he was nice enough to send me the recipe. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today to show me how it's done, but uh, he gave me all the ingredients, he explained what he did, and I'm just gonna give it the good old college try. So what I have is I have about three pounds altogether of ground beef, pork, and veal. And I put these in two separate bowls because in one bowl, we're gonna do it the traditional way, the way that Roger does it, and in the other bowl, we're gonna do it a keto way. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to offer something like this, especially cooking with meat. You have a lot of keto options out there. So I wanna bring some recipes to you guys that stick to that diet while still keeping you know the bready, delicious goodness of traditional here. So what I have is I have a bowl of about eh, one good sized green bell pepper, six cloves of garlic, and half of a really large yellow onion. And I just chopped it all up. And we're gonna get this sauteed in some butter. And that's our first step. Stick around, we'll see you at the stove. Okay guys, so I got a couple tablespoons of butter. And I just warmed it up in a skillet over medium heat. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add all these veggies, the garlic, the bell pepper, and the onion, right to the pan. What we wanna do is we wanna get these veggies well incorporated in with this butter. And we just want to give them a good saute until they start to sweat a little. We want to cook these down a little bit. Okay guys, so this is looking pretty good. We're starting to soften right up and cook down a little bit. Next step in Mr. Rogers' recipe is to drain these bad boys of any excess liquid. And it doesn't look like they'll be all that much. I'm just going to throw them in this colander here over a uh, rimmed plate. We'll just get any leftover moisture or butter right out of these veggies. And then we're gonna get them right back on some heat. So I'm just gonna throw them in here, give them a quick toss. You know, we got a little bit of moisture, a little bit of oil coming out. Then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get them right back into this pan. And what he said to do was he said to finish them off with a little bit of soy sauce. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get some soy going in here. And then he said uh, some A1 steak sauce. This is just steak sauce I bought from Big Y. So we'll get a little A1 going. Then he said some hot sauce. Then he said to use some hot sauce. And he didn't specify which one, but I'm going to go with the Source Fire Smoke and Barrels Barbecue Hot Sauce. What we'll do is we'll get a little nip of that in there. Now we'll just get all these ingredients incorporated. Give them one final saute and then we're gonna put these vegetables aside and let them cool. Now that we got that all incorporated, we're just gonna let it simmer for a minute or two and then we're gonna pull it off and just stick it aside, let it cool down. Okay guys, so while our vegetables have been cooling off, I've added a little bit of breakfast sausage to each one of these and I've been doing it off camera obviously, but I saved one link here. And all I'm doing here is I'm just taking a just a steak knife and I'm just running it right down the length of the link and just breaking the skin open. And all I'm doing, I shouldn't even call it skin, I'll call it casing. And all you do afterwards is you just pull that casing right off and you just get rid of that. You're not going to eat that. You just break the, uh, just break the meat apart and drop it right into your mixture. And we're going to mix this up right in a second. It's going to be awesome. So now that I've got my sausage in there, what I want to do is I really want to incorporate all this together. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come through and I'm just going to use my hands and I'm just going to mix all this meat together as best as you can. You want to do the best you can to really turn this over and mix it together. This could take a little while. That's okay. Just take your time. Be no big deal. It's just like making a meatloaf mix, really. It's all it is. Meatloaf, meatballs, whatever. Now that right there... This right here is what I call epic goodness. I mean, this smells so good right now. Oh, it was that close. That breakfast sausage is really doing the trick for this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix up this other one here, and then when we come back, I'll show you how to mix the veggies in, the breadcrumbs, and your egg. Stick around. Okay guys, so here we are. We have all of our meat mixed together, well incorporated. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna split these veggies 50-50 between both bowls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna 
scoop some of this onion, bell pepper, garlic mixture, our A1 sauce, steak sauce, soy sauce, and hot sauce right into this bowl of meat. All right, now what we're gonna do in each one of these is we're gonna crack an egg. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one of these with breadcrumbs and one of them without because we wanna stay friendly to keto with one of these. So what I'm gonna do here, and I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm just gonna give this a good sprinkle of breadcrumbs in here. And then what I wanna do is I wanna get all these mixed together. I'm gonna put on the gloves, give me a second. So I'll start with my keto friendly one here. I'm just gonna turn all this together. I'm just gonna fold this right over. Come back in and go to our traditional style here. Work all these veggies and these breadcrumbs right into the meat, this egg. And guys, when you're done, this is what you should be left with. Basically just a huge, huge meatballs. Really, really, really huge meatballs. And at New England Fire Cooking, this is all what we're about. Balls and chunk. This is gonna be awesome. Stick around. Okay guys, here we are. We got this bowl of the keto meatloaf here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this out and we're gonna stuff these with some cheese. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull out a handful here. Now I'm just gonna press it, kind of like a burger. In fact, if you wanted to make burgers out of these, these would be really, really good. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm kind of gonna make a little depression in the very middle of this patty right here. And then I've got some shredded Gouda cheese, apple with smoked Gouda cheese, and we're just gonna stuff this with some Gouda cheese, and then we're gonna come back I'm gonna press out another burger and come right over the top. You just wanna make sure that you give it a good squeeze all around the sides. Encapsulate that cheese. And that's one. There we go. We got our keto and we got our traditional. And now what we're gonna do next, we're gonna get these bad boys wrapped in some bacon. Okay guys, so as you can see here, I've got some bacon laid out. Doesn't hurt to use thin bacon with this. It cooks a little bit quicker. This bacon's gonna render right down. It's gonna put some fat and some moisture right back into these meatloaf bombs here. And without further ado, I'm gonna grab this one here. This is one of our keto jobs. And what we're gonna do is basically what you wanna do is you wanna just come up and over and you want to tie all this together somehow. And there's no real rhyme or reason to it. You just want to give it a good wrap. You know, if you have anything left over like this hanging out, you know, you can position a couple slices of bacon right together. That'll go perfect. Start with this inside one first, come right around. And then this one here come right around and then at the very end what I like to do kind of tie it all together is I run one going perpendicular and this one comes up and over just like that so you end up with this really awesome bacon wrapped delicious goodness so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock the rest of these out here, then we'll see you down at the grill. Stick around. Okay, we're down here at the pit. We've got it running right around 375. And what I'm gonna do first before I throw these on is I'm gonna just give the grates a good dose of cooking spray. You don't want any of this stuff to stick. 
now that we got that on, we're gonna start with our keto jobs here. We're gonna take these, we're gonna set them right in the very center. They're already smelling really good. Then we're gonna come back, and this is with our traditional, this is with the breadcrumbs. We'll set those on. closed about a half hour we'll come back and we'll give them a flip stick around okay guys we've given this about a half hour this is looking really really good i got a big old spatula right here we're gonna give these bad boys a flip gonna check back in 30 minutes around okay guys so in about two minutes we're gonna run downstairs and we're gonna glaze our traditional meatloaf bombs we can't put anything with sugar on the keto meatloaf bombs so for this glaze all I've done here is I've taken a small bowl I've put some sweet baby rays barbecue sauce in it and I just put some more of the source fire smoking barrels hot barbecue sauce in there and we're just gonna mix this up you know and what you can do is you can eyeball it that's exactly what I did nothing special here just eyeball it, give it a quick taste test. I have a pretty good idea of what works for me and what I like, but once again, this is all about personal preference here. No real rhyme or reason. Just give it a quick mix and get ready to glaze. Okay, here we are. This is looking really, really good. These are the two that we're gonna glaze. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take the glaze on this brush and I'm gonna slightly brush it right over the top. Make sure to get the sides. Okay guys, so here we are. It's been 10 minutes. This glaze is tacked up really, really nice. And now I'm ready to just jump right into this. I gotta tell you, before I get into this, um, and before I do the recap of what we did here, uh, when I tried this at Super Bowl Sunday, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I gotta tell you, out of all of the Super Bowl food, you know, the recipes we've done on this channel, you know, yada, 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 this was an absolute <laughs> son of a bitch. This one, this was without a doubt an absolute showstopper. This is unbelievable. If I were to ever do this again, okay, I would do it a little bit differently. I would probably make, if I was gonna do this at a barbecue where there's gonna be a lot of people there and so on and so on, I would make sliders out of this. This is a home run. If you can make little st cheesy stuffed sliders out of this and throw some you know red onion and some pickles or some coleslaw and pickles on there and a little bun this would be awesome this is great and you can do whatever you want with this this is you got a lot of wiggle room with this guys um if you got just got ground beef you know it'll be you'll be trust me you'll be just fine you'll be just fine yeah uh, you're not gonna go wrong this is an amazing amazing and very very easy way to completely blow the hair back on just about anyone who eats your food so before i jump into this let's do the run through so we had meatball mix that's ground pork ground beef ground veal all right and then what we did was we added uh, it was about a pound and a half per package so in each bowl we had about a pound and a half of the meatball mix and then what we did was we took three links no, breakfast sausage. We took the skin off or the casing off. We got them right into the meatball mix. And then after that, we sauteed our veggies, one green bell pepper, half of an onion, and about six cloves of garlic. We sauteed them in butter, drained them. And then after that, we got them right back in the pan and got some A1, some soy sauce, and then we used some hot sauce. And for this particular one, I used the Source Fire Smoking Barrels Hot Barbecue Sauce. And we got those nice and cooked down, nice and soft and tender. And then we mixed them in with the meat. Okay, afterwards, what we did was we cracked an egg into each bowl. And then in one bowl, we threw some Italian style breadcrumbs in there. The other bowl we left alone, we didn't add any breadcrumbs in there because we wanted that to be friendly to the keto diet. Okay, but this one that I'm about to cut into right here is the traditional all awesome breadcrumb. Oh, this is just so good. I don't even know where to begin. I, I, I'm stumbling all over myself here, guys. But look, afterwards, we pressed them into patties. 
we made a little depression in the patty and then we put some shredded Gouda, smoked Gouda cheese in there and we put another patty on top, pinched it together, wrapped it in bacon, and got it out on the Traeger at 375 for a half hour on one side and then a half hour on the other. And then for the last 10 minutes of the cook, at least with the traditional style, we mixed up a little glaze of some smoking barrels hot sauce from the source fire and then uh, some Sweet Baby Ray's regular barbecue sauce. Mix that together, brush that right on, let it tack up for about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes or so. And I cannot wait to get in here. And what I've got here is I've got a slicer and I've got a fork and I'm gonna go right dead center and see how we made out. Wow. Guys, and that right there, that cheese mixed right in melted right in. That right there is what I call a meatloaf bomb. I'm gonna cut into this, get a nice big bite out of this one here. Ah, <laughs> almost can't do it. This is really hot. Woo-hoo! That is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Sweet, spicy, hot, savory. Man, you know, I don't even, to describe all the flavors that are in this, we're completely out of this world. I mean, the best meatloaf I've ever had. It was the best meal I've ever had on Super Bowl Sunday. It was right up there. Roger Dillon. This is his recipe. Well done, sir. Excellent job. You just can't go wrong. You can see the smoke ring on this. Oh. Going back in. I'm going right back in. Cook perfect. Barbecue sauce. The smoked gouda flavor. Seasonings from the veggies and flavors from the veggies. The A1. Everything just comes together in this glorious bite of meat goodness. I honestly, I don't know where the flavor begins or ends. You just have so much good flavor. You get smoky from the Traeger. You get just everything. The bacon, the sauce, the, you know, I'm speechless. I'm speechless, so I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep my mouth closed. Or should I say, I'm gonna keep my mouth chewing here because I'm not stopping, I ain't stopping. This is really, really good. You know, I could keep blathering away like a blithering idiot about how good this is. It's moist, it's tender. Guys, for all the stuff we've cooked on this channel, you have really gotta give this a shot. And you can do this on any grill. Okay, you gotta keep in mind, we, we ran hot, you can easily do this on a gas grill. I know gas grills are tough to regulate temperatures, especially if you want to cook low and slow. You don't have to worry about that on this. So if you can maintain 375, you do this on a gas grill all day, every day. Maybe take a little pan full of wood chips, throw it up in the corner of the grill grates. This would be a home run. Oh my God. All credit to Roger Dillon. This is epic. This is absolutely epic and I absolutely love it. Look at that smoke ring. Right on the meatloaf. That is beautiful. That is utterly fantastic. I am psyched about this. But hey, guys, listen. I could eat this every day. This is really, really good. This is an absolute home run. You cannot go wrong with the meatloaf bomb. Cannot go wrong with the meatloaf bomb. Because it's the bomb.
Hey guys, if you really like what you see here and you like what we're doing, give our channel a subscribe. We're gonna be putting out videos all year long, okay? Check us out on Instagram, check us out on Facebook. We're gonna be putting content out like this all the time. We'll see you next time.